it's in the morning and uh you know we put on a little pot of beans we're gonna let them cook all day and then i'll come back and show you some more it's breakfast time for me i hadn't had any breakfast yet yeah i know it's late 10 o'clock in the morning but somebody's been keeping me up late we got this pot of beans started i'm gonna have a good productive day today y'all get ready and watch what we do here on the woodcutter are you ready for some dry canning basics? We're not gonna be extensive in this. I'm gonna show you a quick and simple way to do some dry canning of any dried good that you've got. Flour, beans, rice, et cetera, macaroni, crackers, anything like that that you have that's a dry good, this method will work. So what you need to do this is you need some sort of container, uh, jar, I've got quartz and I've got pints and we're gonna dry, uh, dry can in all of these and you can dry stuff like oats, Pinto beans, black eyed peas, rice. That's what we're going to be doing today. The primary purpose of this is so I can get this rice put away. But I'm going to go ahead and put up um, a pint of those. And then uh, I'm going to put up the rest of those oats. And uh, yeah, let me show you what's So uh, step one is to preheat your oven to about 175 degrees. I'm going to leave it 185. That'll be good enough. And I'm going to let that preheat. next thing we're gonna so the next thing we're gonna do is I've just got this roaster so I can handle these jars in and out of the oven quickly and easily without much hassle some people use a cookie sheet I like the roaster for the edges that are on it so we're just gonna take our jars these are first use new jars take the lids off of them and place them in the roaster and I'm gonna mix and match some sizes because I'm these are all wide mouth jars. I like the wide mouth for this kind of thing so I can get my stuff out easily. But a small mouth jar would be just as convenient and easy to use. Uh, it doesn't take long to do this, y'all. Just uh, fill up your roaster and uh, we're letting that oven get up to, up to temperature. And uh, you can see how easy this is to do. Looks like I'm gonna not be able to get I might be able to get this one in as well nope, that was not going to fit so now these are ready for the oven you can see that our oven is preheated to that 185 now that that oven is preheated to 185 we're going to go ahead and get those jars in the oven for about uh, 30, 45 minutes. The reason we're doing this is to ensure that there's no moisture in our jars and we're gonna kill off any bugs that are in this jar. Um, because we're using first use clean jars, I'm not that worried about the sterilization on these jars. If these were reused jars, then what I would do is I would sterilize my jars in a hot water bath for 15 to 20 minutes in a boiling water bath. Put down a little hot pad for a... Now these jars are extremely hot. Now that we've got our jars out and they're warmed up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this up to uh, about three, 375, okay? We're gonna let the oven continue to heat up and then when we get ready to process our stuff, it'll go in at 375. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, our funnel just to fill these jars. And uh, I put the rice in a bowl just so it'd be a little easier to fill up these jars. And I'm just gonna fill them up to the bottom of the ring, which this funnel, let me show you this. This funnel is a, um, is a jarring funnel. So when we get to the, um, to the bottom of the funnel, we're at the right position on the jar where we wanna be. That one may be a little thin, but we can leave a little extra room in there rather than overfilling. So we're gonna leave about an inch of headspace. That jar's hot. Let's do another one. 
So once again, we just, uh, we take our rice, and we're just gonna, you know, pour it into the jar and through our funnel until it gets, whoops, that one's a little full, to the bottom of the, that one's a little full. Till we, uh, I'm gonna take some out of this, put it over here. We just wanna be to the bottom of that neck curve with our rice, just where the, the bottom of the curve of the neck is, is where our rice level needs to be. I'm gonna go ahead and finish filling these jars up and then I'll show you what we're gonna do next. So you can see we got rice and quartz and pints. We've got oats, uh, a pound of beans in uh, one of these pound packages will be about one and a half pints. And so I've done one pint of pintos and one pint of black eye. And then I've got a mixed bean here that um, I'm going to, I'm going to, can up some more beans and then I'll use this as a mixed bean. My leftovers will be a, a mixed bean canning. Now that we've got the oven preheated, these go back into the oven 375 for an hour. Set my timer, 60 minutes. Now it's just a matter of waiting until that gets done. About 10 to 15 minutes before those get ready to come out, I'm gonna put my lids and rings in the oven to go ahead and get some sterilization on those and then heat up, warm up those seals around the cans that would be used to seal the cans. Okay, so it's about that time. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is just take these lids and rings and put them into my... Uh, top of my broiler pan, okay? This is not hard, y'all. This is not hard at all. I have been doing other things and uh, getting this done in the process. So, uh, let's open the oven. Hello, Nikolai. Come on, slide in. Oop. Well, that ain't gonna work. I've gotta figure this out. You can see, I just turned that, um, I turned my broiler sideways so I could get both of those in the oven. And now these will stay in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so uh, now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take a, tr a clean, dry tea towel, wipe off the top of the lids to make sure that I don't have any contaminants, any residual rice or beans or anything like that on top of my jars. Once we get the jar lids wiped off, then uh, we'll take some sort of rag to handle these hot lids. And uh, we'll put the lids and rings on our jars. These are really hot. I've seen some things where people use silicon gloves, etc. But, uh, and that may be good if you've got a pair, but I don't have a pair. So I'm gonna just use this tea towel. Yeah, those are a little warm. I'm gonna go through and get my lids on and I'll be back. I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, finish up dry packing my rice. I'm gonna get started on these beans. And uh, let me show you real quick before I go what the next step in this process is because these jars have already come out and they've already sealed. The lids have already, dink, they've already popped. And once they popped, they're sealed and they're good for up 10 to 25 years. So the last step in this process is labeling. I've just got a roll of basic masking tape and it doesn't take much of a label. You could write on the top of the jar, but I don't like marking my lids up because I reuse my lids. I've got a, a block of paraffin and that block of paraffin will allow me to reuse these lids over and over and over. So, um, I know that this was this was done in 2020 and it's rice. It seems obvious now, but now I know when this was done and I know what's in the jar. 
I've got a lot more work to do. I've got a lot of dry canning that I'm gonna get done today. Um, thanks for stopping by and seeing dry canning. Dry canning is good for any dry goods, beans of any sort that are dry, rice of any sort that's dry, sugar, flour. Um, sugar does not necessarily have to be dry canned. It is a preservative into itself. The old timers use sugar and salt to, uh, to cure meats. So you don't have to dry can sugar. Get it in your jars. Why the jars? This is a big question. Somebody may, why are you going through all the trouble? It's in an unopened sack. Dry canning does two things. First of all, it puts it in a glass container. Rodents, infestations, etc. in your long-term storage cannot attack a glass mason jar. So you're protecting it from rodent infestation. The other thing that dry canning does that a lot of people don't think about is when you buy these dry goods from the stores, they come with weevil eggs and other insect eggs inside of the dry goods. And so by baking these items in the oven, by dry canning, what you're doing is you're killing those larva eggs so that you will not get um, that if you've ever had a bag of rice that you've waited too long to open and when you open it, the flies come out, you're killing those larval eggs. They're already in there, you're already eating them, but you're making sure that they don't ruin the food product that you're putting back for you and your family to eat. Y'all, thanks for stopping by, I appreciate it. Know that I love you and God bless you all.